Let's talk about, mm, doesn't sound too cheerful, uh, cardiac, cardiac arrest. And we're actually going to talk about um, CPR. And uh, only half the population, in fact, less than half the population, apparently, when asked, would say, yeah, I could use it. They say that 30,000 cardiac arrests take place outside hospital every year, and less than one in ten actually survives uh, such an arrest. To try and turn around those rather dismal statistics, the British Heart Foundation is joining forces with the fire brigade and the ambulance service to launch what it calls Mission CPR. The aim is to equip all young people and adults with the skills to use CPR to effectively save a life. Rowan Bidge is at Birchall High School in Ashton in Makerfield in Greater Manchester. Rowan. Yes, Peter, a couple of other really frightening statistics for you. Uh, for every mi- If you have a heart attack or if you collapse, for every minute that you don't get CPR after you've collapsed, you reduce your chance of survival by 10%. Even more frightening, if you don't get CPR for 10 minutes, your survival chance is down to just 2%, which gives you a sense of how important it is that somebody does get to you urgently. Because obviously, even if you call an ambulance, it's not going to get there immediately. And those 10 minutes are absolutely vital to improving your chances of surviving a heart attack. Um, they are carrying out a series of classes this morning. It's John Fletcher from the Great Manchester Fire and Rescue Service who's been running them, and I went along this morning to see what was happening. Use the hand on the forehead to pinch the nose, and then completely cover the mannequin's mouth with your own and blow in a breath. So a good seal around okay. the, around the mouth. Time that's with us. Watch the chest rise. One hand on the forehead, two fingers of your other hand under the chin. OK, over to you, kids. Let's have a go. I'm not, I'm not grabbing hold of it, put the heel on the head, make sure you pinch the nose, and as you bring the, just lift the chin up, and then get a good seal around the mouth. You can see the, uh, the chest rising. Excellent. Have we got it? Are we doing the 30 compressions followed by two breaths? By the sound of all the clicks, I think you're doing it all right. You've got the, uh, uh, the timings right, 30 compressions, two breaths. I can see a few of you blowing at the end of it, so you can see it is quite physically um, uh, difficult to, to continue. And if you were doing this for several minutes uh, before the ambulance arrives, you will be uh, tired at the end. So if, as we're saying today, there's, there's, a, there's somebody else there who can do CPR, maybe you can swap over between, so, so you get a rest and then you can carry on, as I say, until the, the ambulance and the, uh, the fire service uh, arrive to treat the casualty yeah. further. So, uh, as you can see, it, it was sort of quite interesting this morning. There was about 30 of them there with those plastic dummies doing the compression. So it was John Fletcher from the Great Manchester Fire and Rescue Service who you heard talking there is with me now. John, ju- just explain a bit about what, what we heard there and what was going on today. Well, what we, the aim of today is to sort of get a, a, a nation of, uh, of lifesavers. One of the, 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 the key problems we've got, if somebody has a, a cardiac arrest, is giving them sort of the best chance of survival. And, and that best chance, chance of survival is by... Uh, somebody giving them CPR, uh, mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, prior to the arrival of the, the ambulance service. You, there's 35,000 children, including the ones here, who have been taught this today. But is, is one day enough? I mean, are they going to be able to remember this five years down the line? Well, this is just the start of it. Uh, what we're hoping is that this continues. It's not just about the one, the one class that we're doing today or the one year group that we're doing today. This is something that's been done across the nation uh, in, in a number of schools. It's, it's pan-European. Uh, and then hopefully what will happen then is this will be the, the catalyst and, and, and it'll just manifest itself from there and we'll continue. Uh, the fire service will actively engage in... Uh, training in, in CPR and hopefully the schools will, will continue to do that as well. And what's it been like? Uh, you know, what sort of response have you had? We've got some of the children here we're going to talk to them in a minute. In terms of your experience, what's it been like this morning? It's been absolutely fantastic. I can't overemphasise how enthusiastic uh, they've been. Uh, very noisy, um, but the, you know, that, that's just the, the way that they get, they're engaging with us and to see the difference in what they like at the end of the session as to what they were like at the beginning of the session, you, you just can't put it into words. So we've got three of the pupils here who've been through the session this morning. They're Ellie, James and Elizabeth. Let's turn to you first, James. Um, what was it like when you had to do it for the first time? It was very, like, nervous at the start because we didn't know what to do, but when we showed the video, it was very easy to learn off it and it got really easy and you got really confident when you started doing it over and over again. So, uh, Ellie, I'll ask you, I mean, it's quite hard to do this, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's... It requires like a lot of strength to be actually be able to like push down on the chest, um, and it's really tiring as well. Because you really have to kind of press down with some force onto that chest, don't you? Yeah, like 
even after about five, it starts to really hurt your hands, like, and it's, it is really tiring. Like, I was surprised at how tiring it was. Elizabeth, I mean, did you feel more com confident about doing this in real life after the session? How did it feel before and after? Um, it is a lot different because at the start you don't really know what to do and where to place them, but you get used to it near to the end. So if you were now faced with somebody who was having a heart attack or had stopped breathing, do you think you'd feel more confident about how to keep them alive now? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, um, it's, it's really important to like, learn it because like, if, even if there was someone on the phone telling me how to do it, like, and I probably wouldn't have the confidence that I do now um, to do it. James, just one last one to you. You are now responding to people having heart attacks as the fire service alongside the ambulance service, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. In Greater Manchester, uh, we've recently um, come into a partnership agreement with the North West Ambulance Service where if a fire engine um, is within a close vicinity to somebody who's had a cardiac arrest, we will mobilise in, in, consult, in a tandem with the, uh, the ambulance service. So if we need to give any sort of definitive care prior to the uh, arrival of the ambulance, then we'll do so to improve the survivability of the casualty. As you, I was saying earlier, there's 35,000 children being taught this today across schools in England. At the moment, the survival rate for heart attacks in the UK, less than 10%. In Norway, where it's taught in all schools, is 25%. So you can see the impact that these sorts of lessons can have.